my friends, I'm Michelle, and this is my channel, Penny's Daughter Shares, where I will talk primarily about cross-stitch. And since that's definitely the hot subject for today, I don't even need to go into further detail, I don't think. If you're new here, thank you for joining me and sharing some time with me today. If you are returning because you've been here before, thank you for coming back. Welcome to all of you. Um, if you haven't done it already, please like and subscribe. And the other thing that I've recently learned, and I've talked about it before, is there is a notification bell down there below where you can also like and subscribe. And if you hit that bell, then you will get notified when I post new videos. And I haven't been very regular with my posting, so <laughs> the bell will be helpful. And if you like to watch my videos, then you'll know when they're coming up. <laughs> I want to say thank you to all the new people that have been coming over and checking me out and subscribing. And even the not so new people who have been sending me lots of random and very lovely messages, whether it's been an email or you sent me a private message on Instagram or you just commented either here or on Instagram. I love that stuff so much. I really, really, really appreciate it because, you know, when you're making these videos, I'm not getting direct response as I'm talking to you. <laughs> So when I hear response at other times, it I guess it helps me realize that, that people are paying attention. <laughs> and I enjoy that. So thank you for everyone that takes the extra few minutes out of your day, whenever it is, in, in, in whatever form it takes. I truly, truly appreciate all of those compliments that that you share with me. So let's see, I'm checking my notes, see what I want to talk about. And before I get into the stitching, which I already said that was our primary goal here today. <laughs> but I wanted to talk about what I one of the big projects that I worked on that was not stitching related since I last talked with you. And what it is, is I don't remember the exact timing of when I started doing this, but um, it's been a long lot of years. And when my kids were all smaller, I took tons and tons of pictures. And as they're getting older, I haven't been taking as many, which makes me feel a little guilty. But then I'm like, but you know, it's not about the cute shirt they have on today or Viv's cute hair bow that's in her hair or, um, you know, some special PJ day at pre-K and your stuffy that you're taking with you and, um, you know, all those really cute little things or even more of them when they're babies. But anyway, I have always kept a journal and I... Um, I write in my journal every time I take pictures and explain why I take pictures. Well, um, oh, that I have not been doing for, mm, I'm going to say two years, maybe longer. And I mean, I was really regular about it. I have many of them and it has every picture written down or, you know, kind of the reasons behind the pictures. Or if we were on a trip, it explained what we did or where we were or whatever you know, all these kind of details. Um, anyway, my big project that I caught up was I've got an external hard drive that I sh save all of our family photos to. And I had not done that. And I can't remember the date I had to start with, but I'm pretty sure it was almost exactly two years 
worth of photos that I needed to save to my backup. Now, <laughs> when I saw that, it freaked me out. And I thought this project was going to take me a really long time. I ended up doing it over the course of a couple of days, but that's pretty much all I did. Like I didn't really stitch or craft or anything in those times. Maybe a little stitching like at night, but not a lot. But I got it done. So I'm caught up with my photo backup. The journals, well, you know, maybe those aren't going to get so much attention anymore for now. And, and when I say journal, they're literally little notes with a date on it that corresponds with the pictures. And someday <laughs> in my free time, I want to put together photo books where I organize and, you know, put the photos in um, photo books and I can type in my journal notes to combine them together and then we have these nice books, which I have some of those, but if I can't seem to back up the photos, how am I going to get books done? Whatever. Okay, so I am really proud that I have that backed up. So through the end of 2022, I am all backed up and I'm not going to let it get away from me so far. Um, back again. So I just felt like ugh, I need a little pat on my back for that because it was one of those things that just kind of weighed on my mind. And I don't know if you're that way that you carry things and you'll think of it, I don't know, when you're trying to go to sleep at night and by the morning you get up and you're on to whatever the day is bringing you. And that is just not um, a high ranking priority. And so then you'll go a couple days and then you'll be trying to fall asleep again and you'll remember, oh, I need to do that. Yes, well, it just was one of those weights in the back of my mind. And so um, it just, it helps release that weight, right? And uh, actually it leads into the next thing I wanna talk about because the FFO Challenge, which I'll put the hashtag right here, FFO Challenge 2023. I'm ready to talk about that. And, but how this leads in is because of the inspiration and the encouragement from the FFO Challenge, and I was feeling accomplished myself with having gotten several FFOs done, it carried me to doing another project that was just sort of at the back of my mind and weighing me down. And now it just, I feel more free. So the FFO challenge for me is not just FFOs that is making me uh, reap benefits from it. <laughs> All right, so now let's specifically talk about the FFO Challenge 2023. Are you following the hashtag on Instagram? If you're not, go over there and follow it. Oh my gosh. We have had, I know we're well over 100 posts with that hashtag. And I know that we're, I think, we must be well over a hundred FFOs that people are sharing. And, oh, for a little background, for anyone that doesn't know, Two Tall Stitchers, and it's Jen, Jen Quilter on Instagram. She and I started this together and we had no idea <laughs> that this was going to take off like this. It is fantastic. Um, so like I said, if you haven't checked it out, make sure you check it out and follow it so that you can see because people are sharing, you know, professionally framed things, things they're framing themselves. Uh, let's see. I know there's drums that people have done and lots of pin pillows and let's see, flat folds and ornaments um, I'm sure there's more ideas that I did not just list off, 
but it is so fun. And Jen and I are both trying to um, share in our stories every time someone is posting their FFOs. And so I do want to make a little note on that. Please don't feel bad if you're post doesn't show up in our story. Jen and I are figuring out that even though we're following the hashtag and even though we search it up and go and check it at least once a day every day, we're still not seeing them all. And I'm not sure why. It's an Instagram thing. <laughs> if you have suggestions, let me know. Um, but we're doing as best we can to try to include everyone because that's part of the fun, right? Uh, so, like I said, please don't feel bad. If I if I miss you or Jen misses you, we're catching them as we can. Um, if there is something you really want to share out there with everyone and it didn't get picked up even though you put the hashtag on it, um, you know what, send me a private message with it or tag me with my Instagram, which is Penny's Daughter Shares or Jen's, which is at Jen Quilter. Um, and if you tag us, I think that will guarantee that we will see it if we're tagged in it. But don't count on that for 100% because I am far from an Instagram expert. <laughs> So um, if you're participating, there's a little bits of things that, you know, we're trying to make it as fun as possible. It's very frustrating if we're missing things. But um, like I said, if you tag one of us or both of us, I'm pretty sure that's a guarantee that we'll see it. I think. <laughs> Okay, so like I said, if you haven't checked it out, be sure to. And if you are following it, keep following it. It's so fun. And even if for some reason, some of you are really awesome and you tell us how you don't have a lot of finished things that need to still be FFO'd. Yay, I am sending you all the clapping hands because you are awesome. But that doesn't mean that you can't participate in the FFO challenge. If you're one of those people that keeps up with your FFOs and you're doing them with each time you get a stitch finish, post that up there. It's all inspiration for everyone else too. Um, and, you know, we all can celebrate with you. And the encouragement, I, it is really feeding on itself. It's just... So much fun. So don't feel that you need to have that. Uh, let's see. I think someone called it a drawer of doom. <laughs> uh, let's see. Other people have underbed boxes. And um, did someone call it a box of shame? I can't remember. But um, even if you don't have that, you're still part of the FFO challenge if you want to be. And maybe you're not doing any FFOs, and that's fine too, but you can always comment and encourage all of us that are doing them too, and that's how you want to participate. So in any way, it's just fun. And I can speak for myself that it's adding to the joy of my stitching, what do we call it? A hobby, a passion, an obsession. <laughs> so um, anyway, everyone that is participating, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. No matter how you're participating and for anyone that's getting encouragement from it, awesome. It's so awesome. Okay, let's see. So I think uh, I think I kind of just gave an overview of the FFO challenge. I didn't have a lot of specific, specific notes about it. 
what I want to do now is talk about my own <laughs> FFO that I have to share. So anyone that's followed before or watched some of my videos before, um, you know, I had gotten five FFOs so far this year. So this is number six for me. And I'll show you the chart. This has been hanging around for a while. You didn't, if you watched my finish parade, my 2023 finish parade, did I date it 2023 or 2022? Now I don't remember. It's from a few weeks ago. <laughs> it's either the 2022 or the 2023 finished parade from a few weeks ago. <laughs> this one was not in there because I actually finished this stitch in 2021. And I will give you a heads up from the get go. This one may cause me a few tears as I talk. So I'm not going to apologize for that because you all tell me not to. <laughs> um, but just as a sort of a heads up. So this is all pretty new to show you, or recent, I guess. Um, so this is Cozy Christmas Cat from the Blue Flower. There's the chart picture. So cute. I mean, come on, a cat in a Christmas sweater. Oh, so cute. And the cat is black. So for anyone who doesn't remember my stories or has never heard them, we had a black cat that was with our family for 14 years. And we had to say to goodbye, see? We had to say goodbye to him um, December 27th, 2021. His name was Jasper and uh, miss him every, every day. Every day I still think about him and wish he was here, so. Um, Anyway, so I had gotten this chart because it came out and it was a black cat on a, in a Christmas sweater and I needed to stitch it because I loved everything and still do love everything black cat because of our lovely Jasper. And um, unfortunately it turned into a memory piece instead. Um, okay. So let's show you my FFO and then I can talk about all the details, okay? <laughs> so here it is. I finished it as an ornament. And uh, so let's, I'll remind you how I stitched it. It is, sti he stitched on 40 count Brea from Needle and Flax, which has to be one of my, <laughs> I love needle and flax linens. This Brea is one of my favorite colors. <laughs> I've stitched a lot of things on it. So, um, and then let's see. So that was 40 count. I am double checking here. I used one called for color. <laughs> Everything else I swapped out um, in a couple places just for shades that were more my style and what I happen to have in my in my collection and ready to use. So it still looks pretty much like, you know, the cover photo, but like I said, I wanted it to be more of my colors. And so that's the stitching. And I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, for the finish or the full finish for the ornament. Underneath here is a wood ornament and I think they're in a pack of four that I got from Hobby Lobby. And the front side of it is finished off in like a distressed white finish. The back of it is just the plain naked, you know, craft brown color of MDF. 
Um, what I did, and I'm so I'll flip this around so you can see the back. So you can see my fabric is flat and smooth on the back. And I think you can see, I hope, uh, that's kind of gathered here. So what I did was I took, um, I cut a circle of fabric that was at least two inches larger in diameter than the diameter of my ornament. And then I just ran like a gathering stitch by hand around the border of my piece of fabric and I cinched it up and so it wrapped it basically. So behind my stitch, it's just the gathered up fabric, which is no different than how I did, I mounted the stitching. I did the same thing. I cut a circle of out of the linen and, um, and cinched it up. And then I laced it back and forth a couple times just to tighten up the threads and secure them. The, gosh, I feel like this was really complicated and I'm not feeling very organized in my explanation, so I apologize for that. Um, the stitching is mounted to a piece of sticky board and then I put a piece of batting cut to size on the board and then like I said I laid my stitch on there ran that basting stitch pulled it taut um, to gather it up and then this pom-pom trim is from Lady Dot Creates it is the color vintage so you can kind of see it's you know has some various color to it, it's not a solid color pom-pom. And, okay, my backing fabric that I used is from Tim Holtz, and it's part of the Eclectic Elements collection. And I'm not sure if that whole collection is all Halloween sort of themed fabrics or if it encompasses some other sort of themes, but this was out of the Halloween portion of that. Um, and if you've watched me before, you know I've used this before. <laughs> I love it. I love Tim Holtz fabrics and the grunginess. Um, and okay, so the backing here, my tag that I made, I stitched that on an extra piece of Brea it's 40 count and um, let's see. So Jasper's name is stitched one thread over two linen threads. And then the date, the years, I stitched one thread over one linen thread. So that's one over one. My initials down here are back stitched one over one. And the little hearts I found on another chart and they're just little satin stitches to create the hearts and so I thought that was just a perfect little add to it when I put it together. And then all I did was I, um, and I'll put it up closer so you can see, but I just did a back stitch border all the way around my tag. And that's stitched right to this piece of fabric. And then I trimmed it and then fringed, you know, pulled the threads to fringe the edges. So I thought that was an easy way to get that tag on there. Um, let's see. And then I just tied a bow with a little piece of sort of a burlap look ribbon and added the 2021 charm. The other thing that we did was there was a piece of jute stapled to the ornament for the hanger. And um, Jeff, my awesome husband, <laughs> took that out for me and drilled a hole for me. So can you see that? 
there you go. Um, cause I just liked it, but I wanted to do that. So, um, did I cover all the details of this? Oh, the other thing you might be wondering, well, it's a Christmas sweater on a cat. Why isn't it more Christmas colors on your ornament? Well, that's a very simple answer. I wanted to keep this quite neutral. Like I said, it ended up being a memory stitch. And I plan on, I'll probably hang this like I have a couple of greenery wreaths in my um, decor. And I will probably hang this like in the center of it. And it'll just be out all the time for the foreseeable future, to be honest. I'm sure at some point someday, I may go, okay, we can now put this in our Christmas decor and we'll just get it out at Christmas time. Um, but until that day, I wanted it to not be, I didn't want Christmas to be the main theme of it. Does that make sense? So that is my memory piece for our Jasper finally FFO'd. Like I said, that is number six for me for 2023. And I will just point out one more time that <laughs> I had four FFOs in all of 2022. So man, I'm blowing that out of the water right now. <laughs> so yeah, so that is Cozy Christmas Cat from the Blue Flower. All right, so that's my only actual FFO today. But I have some more FFO plans to kind of share with you. And what kind of goes with that is some finishes that I had. So that is where we're headed next with our discussion today. So my finish is actually five finishes. And it is Love Notes from Brenda Gervais with Thy Needle and Thread. Sorry for the glare. I think everyone's pretty familiar with what this is. And I got all five done. And so I'll show you my finishes and I will show you what my plans are for the FFO. So here is the first one. Let's see, this one is called Love Stamp. I'm gonna try to tell you the name of each one, but I don't know if I'll remember them all. <laughs> so this is Love Stamp. I stitched all five of these on 40 count Color Happens from Fiber on a Whim. Um, let's see. And I used mostly called for colors, which this is charted all in DMC. I did, you can tell that the red is definitely not DMC uh, with the variegation in it. I used Color and Cotton Bing Cherry. Every time I say that or read it, I think of Chandler on Friends and the time he's looking for a new roommate when Joey moves out and he talks about somebody or, or is it when he was, or what? No, sorry. It's the like rewind episode where they go back three years and he's looking for a roommate before him and Joey were together as roommates. And he talks about someone annoying that he interviewed that said, he had to make a noise every time he said his name. Chandler Bing. Bing! <laughs> oh, okay. That concludes our friends talk for the day. <laughs> so that's Love Stamp. Like I said, Bing Cherry from Color and Cotton for the red. Uh, the other, let's see. Let me get this clipped and then I'll, okay. This one, hmm. I don't remember the name of it, but can you see how small this is? I'm trying to see, what can I hold up there that you could really tell? I mean, here's my finger, I don't know. 
Does that? It's so tiny. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to fully finish this because it's so tiny. It's gonna be so stinking cute. So, oh, this one might be like key to my heart or something. Okay. Uh, let's see. Another substitution that I made on here is the white. It called for DMC 3865, which I've used a lot and I really like. Uh, but for anyone that's been here before, you know my love of toasted marshmallow from Color and Cotton. No, classic color works, all those C's. <laughs> Toasted Marshmallow Classic Color Works. That's what I used because I love it. <laughs> this one is Cupid's Cup. So again, you can see the, um, apparently I have a jet flying over. I don't know if you can hear that. It was really loud. Um, you can see the variation in the cup um, from the Bean Cherry. And that's what I wanted. I Because of these big, big spots of, you know, heavy stitching, I wanted variation in the, in the color. So that is Cupid's Cup. Let's see. And my other swaps of color, I'll tell you on this one because it's not on every one. The two greens, again, they were DMC called for. I pulled out... I didn't love the shades for me. Um, and so I pulled out something relatively close, but more my sort of style, if is that the right way to say it, I guess, um, for the greens. And so I used, let's see, the darker green is Gentle Arts Forest Glade. So on Cupid's Cup, it's the leaves. And then the stems on Cupid's Cup, it's the lighter green. And it is Classic Color Works Bean Sprout. So though that covers my, my changes, or sorry, substitutions for the floss colors. And let's see, I always put this upside down. I think I have it right side up, okay. I think this is called Hugs and Kisses. And if you are part of the eagle eyes <laughs> that can often tell people when they have a mistake or missed something in their stitching, which I would welcome that anytime you want to share that with me, unless I'm showing you an FFO, please don't tell me. <laughs> At this point, yes, please tell me. Please say, hey, Michelle, you forgot something. Well, anyone that would notice, there's four rows on the chart of the X's and O's. And I only did three, and I did that on purpose. First of all, I was tired of stitching X's and O's. <laughs> um, this was the last one I finished of the five. So I was just like, okay, I'm ready to be done. And then I got to almost the end of the third row, like I started at the top and came down. Um, I got to the end of the third row and realized I was one fabric thread off. And I'm not tearing that out. And I tear out everything. <laughs> I frog everything every time I make a mistake. Um, and I was like, no, it's one fabric thread. No one will ever see it. Maybe you can now that I told you. But uh, when that happened in a conjunction with this was number five for the finishing and I was had had enough of stitching the X's and O's and then being off one thread. I'm like, no, nah, I think this is a good spot to be done because what I'm going to do is I am going to, when I fully finish this one, I'm going to add a strip of my backing fabric here at the bottom to make this more of a um, uh, a portrait orientation stitch, right? So it'd be more of a vertical 
orientation. I think that will be really cute. And then I could add like either a trim or a bow or something with it. So that's why I decided on that because I guess I was a little frustrated. So I think it will be really cute anyway. And I'll, I'm just was ready to move on. All right. And number five, which is my favorite of the set. And I can't remember. Is this one called Lovebirds or Be Mine? I don't remember. But I love this one. I think it is so sweet. Oh my gosh. I just I love it. Love, love, love it. And I can't wait to have a little pillow done. So those are my five finishes. And well, I'll leave this one clipped on here so I can show you what I'm doing. All right, so I said I was gonna talk about kind of my FFO plans because I actually have this sort of um, planned in my head that I wanna get it fully finished. Honestly, I would love to have these fully finished before Valentine's Day because after Valentine's Day, I will not be motivated to, to do these. <laughs> um, so hopefully, today's February 8th, I should be able to have them done. Actually, I plan on really working on them a lot tomorrow. And um, I don't know what my point was. Anyway, I have FFO plans, and so I thought I'd share them with you. Um, first of all, I think I talked last time about this, I'm going to call it a new obsession, and I'm not sure where I've been, but um, somehow I discovered French general fabrics. Um, I already talked about how much I love the Tim Holtz fabrics. I love Basic Gray, all of their lines and their grunge basics and stuff, and if you've been around, you've seen me use them a lot. Um, Anyway, I don't know where I've been. How did I miss the French General train? I got on there now. <laughs> so anyway, this is part of some French General that I have recently ordered. And I don't know if you're going to be able to tell, but this almost has a linen texture to it. It's thicker than, you know, the regular sort of cotton fabrics. And so I thought it would be perfect for backing pillows. And so this will be, you know, I'll cut a piece of this out for um, X's and O's or what I don't remember. What I tell you, it was hugs and kisses. So to kind of give you an idea, I'm going to have, you know, that on the bottom. So it's so awesome. <laughs> I love it. And um, so this, I'll just use this on the back of all the pillows. Did I say that? I'm going to make all five of them into pillows, kind of like the chart shows, with my own sort of twists. Um, I don't know if I'm going to add trim, uh, maybe on one or two. I don't know. I'll see as I'm working on them and I'll make those decisions kind of as I'm working my way through. And let's see. Then the other little detail, which leads me into a question I had. I had someone email me and asked me about how I do my initials. And so I thought this would be kind of a nice way for me to show you and explain to you how I do my initials a little a little more in detail. I mean, I won't belabor the point, but uh, because I stitched up for these little, this little set, I made five little initial tags that I just stitched. And I'll tell you how I did that. So because this is generally how I do my initials, I may move it around, you know, the my initials and the year may not be together. You know, they may be positioned separately. They may be all in one line. You know, I may move them around. But this is my generally, this is what I use on almost everything I stitch. So what I've done is um, 
I have a piece of grass. Let me try that again. A piece of graph paper <laughs> that I have drawn out my initials and the year. Uh, and so, you know, because we just then came into 2023, I had one for 2022. I drew a new one for 2023. And I have, you know, my initials in the year drawn out. And then I have written right on there the stitch count of each part so that I don't have to count it every single time I go to use them because I was doing that at one point. And I'm like, why are you doing this? So because I have that written down, then I can figure out exactly where I want to lay them out. Uh, and if they'll fit on, you know, when I'm doing a stitch and I'm actually, you know, putting them right in on the stitch, not in this format. So I have that and I keep it in a sheet protector. It's on one of my shelves over here. And when I'm ready to do initials, I pull that out and I can use it. The other format I have, and I wish I had pulled an example. I'm sorry I didn't. Um, but I have like my initials in more of a square. So like my last name, my C is really big. And then I have two M's, one on top of each other on the other side of it. And then I also have the year formatted in more of a square layout, which it's two zero and then two three at the bottom. So I have those all laid out on a graph paper. And then when I want to add my initials, I just pull that out and I can follow it. And I don't have to relay it out or, you know, remember it because let's face it, I never, I would never remember the standard all the time. Um, and then, so I stitch it almost always with one floss thread over one linen thread. These are all stitched that way. So one over one back stitched. Now there are times I've done samplers or other um, sort of stitches that maybe there's a place designated for your initials. So, you know, like what remains, right? I go with basically how the initials are charted on that one I did, right? So on the chart, it had where your initials would go and then you choose your initials and put them in there. That's what I did on that one. Um, the year was already on that one too. So obviously I use those. Where something, there's been some other samplers where maybe they don't have initials and date on them. And I might go look through other charts and come up with my own sort of initial plan, date plan, like where I want it to fit and then find an alphabet that will let allow me to fit it in there. Um, and it may be a more prominent sort of look, right? Because they're bigger letters and such. So anyway, if you have more questions about how I do the initials and the date, please ask me. Um, I don't know if I covered it very well or not. And if you weren't interested in that part, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, um, but that's how I do it. And for these, so I'll take for these little pillows, I will cut these apart and I'll sew these on to the back of my pillows. Because that's, I did that on Jack-O-Lantern Jubilee uh, with Thy Needle and Thread, the other, the Halloween booklet. Um, I made little tags on the back of the pillows and I, I really was happy with how that turned out, so. Um, okay, so that's Love Notes from Brenda Gervais. Like I said, finished stitching all five of them and plan to get those FFOs done here soon. Uh, let's see, another FFO plan I have and I'm pretty sure I showed this last time as a stitch finish. It's Threadwork, sorry, Threadwork Primitives Endless Hearts. It says Valentine's Day. 
So I'm not gonna go over this one in detail. I'm just gonna show you, like I said, I'm pretty sure I showed, shared this in my last video. So there is my stitchy finish. So because we were just talking about initials, you can see here I dropped out these little doodads that were stitched in the border and replaced it with my initials and the date. So sometimes I do it that way. Those are stitched the same way as the other ones I just showed you. So I plan to stitch the, or I'm sorry, FFO this into a pin pillow and it's gonna be long, horizontally. Again, French General came into my life. <laughs> and I think this fabric is beautiful. So for this pillow, I plan on a strip of fabric on each end to make it even a little longer. And then I'll use this fabric for the backing also. And again, with the trim, I will just um, make those sorts of decisions as I'm working on the pillows. Um, I tossed around a couple on that one and they weren't really exciting me. <laughs> so I'm gonna work on putting it together and then I'll decide if I wanna add it or if I may not need it because that's a pretty bold fabric. So sometimes you don't need the chart or need the extra trim. Um, okay. And continuing with the FFO plans, I'm actually going to show you FFOs in process or in, in progress, whatever. I means pretty much the same thing, right? So these are with my needle and thread wordplay series. There's 12 months. I have two of mine done. And this is the next two. So this is March. And I'll show you April too. I'm not going to go over all the details with this because I do that. I've done that multiple times. But I just wanted to show you, like I said, they're in progress. So I have hand sewn. It's a little zigzag border, which I did on my other two full finishes. All right, here is the back. You see that piece of felt? That's what I use on the back. I have um, put interfacing on the back of this to give it just a little more smoothness and a little more stability. And then, like I said, I hand stitched that on. Now I just need to, so I'll go, the next steps will be to trim this down and all I'll do, I will fold this over and I'll trim that right close to my stitching line. And then I can figure out where I wanna cut for my fringe length. And I have notes on that, I don't remember what it was, but I count a number of fabric threads and I'll pull that fabric thread out so I know where to cut and then I'll pull more threads off here to make my fringe. So that's March where I'm at. And April is in the same spot. So that's my progress on two word plays. And so I have the hardest work done on these because the stitching is done. Now it's basically trim and fringe. And then this part is done. I have my, so here's February back here behind me, and you see I have a fabric covered board. I have all my boards cut. I have my um, my background fabrics picked out and laid out for each month. So I just need to cut that fabric and put it on the board and then attach this to the front of it, you know, and let's see. Oh, and then I need to put some washers on the back of it so that I can swap it out each month with the magnets. So like I said, I have the hard work done on these. These won't take too much longer and I'll have two more FFOs. Um, if you remember, I have a priority list of things and I set my goal to get two FFOs done per month for the year. 
Um, but my priority list is a little bigger than that, which would be 24. It's actually around 30, I think, on my priority list. Um, and I'm, I'm ahead of the game in terms of how many I want to get done. But remember that phrase, set yourself up for success? That's what I'm trying to do. I'm still continuing to work on it. You know, sometimes I have to reel myself in. No, you can't do that much. So um, my original plan was I was only going to get March wordplay done in the month of February. So it was ready for March. And I was going to continue that on each month until they were all done. But I got it out and it was like, I might as well do two at a time. So my other thing that I was going to work on this month, I am pushing off for a month. And we can talk about that another time. Um, but I am still on track with my numbers of FFOs, getting them done. And this is working for me. I have a plan, but I can move around within my plan a little bit. And I'm often so rigid with myself and that's what does not set myself up for success look like. Because if I'm rigid and I have a specific plan and if I don't stick to it, then I'm failing. That's what, that's what word is in my brain. Um, and this time I don't feel that way. I'm like, no, I'm still working on my goal. I'm just adjusting when things are getting done. That's all. So let's see, that's five, six, seven, eight. That'll be eight FFOs to add to my total, which is awesome. Let's see. Oh, I feel like there was one other thing I wanted to say. Oh, yes. Okay. So I just want to talk a little more about FFOs because I have something fun that I'm working on getting figured out. So I have, I'll call it an outline of a plan. And I am going to do FFO March Madness is what I'm going to call it. And I put that down here um, with a hashtag. So for the month of March, um, and is it, I think it's Steel City Stitchers that started doing a March Madness type um, program. And everyone kind of does their own way of doing it, has their own way of sort of how they want to do it and voting and whatever. I'm working on outlining my month of March with some FFOs and how to include you and let you vote on some things. And so I'm working on getting that all together and I will do a special, I'm sorry, there's someone at my door. I'm like at the front of my house here, but they didn't ring the doorbell, so it must have been delivery. <laughs> um, and I will be doing more towards the end of the month. I will do a video that will explain all of it, but um, if you participated with me last year, like I would do some video stuff on YouTube and then all the voting is on Instagram. And that will be the way I will do it again this year. But I just want to let you know also that I have a fun plan in the works and I will be sharing that coming up soon. Uh, let's see. Okay, we are down to a new start and I'll call it a current whip, something I've been working on. So let's start with a new start first. That's a lot of starts. So this one, this is Hocus Pocus from Hello from Liz Matthews. Um, and Jeff, picked this out with me when I think we were at Keepsakes and he loved what it said because he wants me to stitch this for him and get it in a frame and then he wants to have it as, at his office. Uh, we got this a while ago and I just had been 
toying around with a piece of fabric, wanting to use it for it. It wouldn't fit, um, but I came up with a plan. And what made me actually get this out and get started right now, I will show you before I show you my start. It is this lovely piece of fabric. Again, this is Tim Holtz. <laughs> and it is Eclectic Elements. And it says it's called Abandoned. There you go. I could just show you that. All right. Can you, I hope you can see in the video that it's very green and black. Like those are the colors in there, which. So I just ordered this piece of fabric because I liked it and I thought it would be a great piece to use for backing pillows or accenting, you know, some of my FFOs. And um, it came, I think, last week. And Jeff came in my craft room and saw it and he said, I want something out of this piece of fabric. <laughs> and it like clicked right away for me. Oh, hocus pocus on this would be awesome because of the piece of fabric that I wanted to use to stitch hocus pocus. All right, so, let's see, is my board big enough? I think so. Here is my start. Oh, sorry for the wrinkles, but I'm in the process of stitching it, and so it's going to be wrinkled. All right, let me tell you the details I have going on here. I am stitching this on, oh, let me find my notes, sorry, 32 count Spanish moss, and this is from Fabrics by Stephanie. So I'm stitching two floss threads, over two linen threads on this one. I'll show you a little closer my stitching there. Um, I chose to use just black anchor floss for this. And I think it's really, to me, anchor has just this slight matte finish to it that's a little less sheen than DMC. I don't know. I just, I think it looks super cool with this fabric, this linen, and then to put it with this grungy fabric. Okay, so here gives you a little more idea of what's going on. Now, this piece of linen was a lovely gift from my friend Michelle, and when she sent it to me, I fell in love with it, and I just, I wanted the right stitch for it because I loved it so much. Have I told you my favorite color is green? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> this was the perfect thing, um, in my opinion, for this piece. Well, on 32 count, the piece that she sent me was not going to fit. And so I think this is about a fat eighth. And my, this chart will not fit the way it's charted, the words, the way they're charted, would not fit on this fabric. So you can see that I have started Hocus and it's sort of in the middle of the upper phrase, it's just a bunch of. So I sort of recharted this, I guess, and I moved, so I moved Hocus over to be centered on this phrase. And then Pocus is going to go down here. So rather than Hocus Pocus being all one line, it's going to be two lines. And so far, I'm thinking it's going to look really, really good. And then that way I could use this fabric for what I really, really wanted to use it for. And so that's my change. And then the, so I plan to create, um, I'll call it a fabric border with this fabric at the top and at the bottom. And the bottom is going to be quite a bit bigger than the top border. Like I just want just a little bit at the top and then I want the bottom to be kind of a big chunk. And then I'm going to frame it. 
I'm not 100% sure on exactly what size of frame. I'm just going to do a standard frame, you know, um, off the rack frame. I'm thinking around an 11 by 17, but again, let me get this stitched and figured out how much fabric I want to show because maybe it'll be even a little bigger. I'm not sure yet, but I plan to frame it and then Jeff can have it in his office. This is my current whip that I've showed you before. Faith, Hope, Peace, Love sampler from Teresa Kogut. And I think you can see that pretty good. And my goal is to have this finished by October of this year. And it's in celebration of the 25th anniversary of Jeff's and my first date. So if you remember last time I was telling you that I um, had heard of, and I'm sure this has been around for a long time and whatever, I had never participated or tried it where they were calling it a 25-7. So for 25 minutes a day, they would pick up a particular project seven days a week and just put in a few minutes every day until they got the project done. Well, I round that to 30 minutes because I need round numbers. And I did that for a number of days. I haven't picked this up in at least a week. Because I just, it was like I was in love notes and I wanted to finish them and I don't know. I just, I was also a little frustrated with this and I'll tell you why in a minute. So what I have done since I last showed you does not look like much. <laughs> so I basically had from here all of this done. So I finished the top border and I started to come down here on the border just a little bit. Um, oh, let me give you the details real quick because I'll forget if I don't. I'm stitching this on 40 count affogato from Fiber on a Whim. I am, so that means I'm stitching one floss thread over two linen threads. And I'm using all the called for colors except for the white. I'm using Classic Color Works Toasted Marshmallow. <laughs> um, yes, it's my favorite. What can I say? Anyway, um, and it shows up wonderful on this fabric. So that's what I like too. Okay, so let me talk a little why I got a little frustrated with this. Okay, so I should look to see how many days I did work on this. And there were several other days that I worked well over my 30 minutes because I just want to get this top border done. So I started in the upper left corner. Well, when I started this, I was using my Q-snap. Well, now I'm stitching in hand and I much prefer to stitch from the upper right corner to start and work my way over and down. So I wanted to get that top border done so that I was all lined up and I could then start from this upper right corner and work my way, you know, this way <laughs> to get it done. Or maybe I work down for a while and then over, however it balances out. In this, there's so many color changes in that border and it just took me so long. So like, it felt like if I only worked on it for 30 minutes in a day that I would get, it, it felt like maybe I did 20 stitches or something ridiculous. And it, it was just very, it was a little frustrating. I'm, I love it now that it's done. And I love these flowers on the side borders. I think they're so pretty. So I think it got set down because like I said, I was trying to finish some other things and just, sort of some carryover frustration, like, oh, I don't know if I feel like picking that up yet. So, so my experiment with third, I'm calling it 30 slash <laughs> seven, isn't necessarily 
terribly successful at the moment. Uh, but I got a fair amount done. So I think I'm still going to be trying that. I'm, I'm just not sure what day I'm going to pick it back up and go, okay, let's get back to, because that's the other thing. By doing this for 30 minutes a day, I'm, it needs to be the first thing I pick up and stitch on. Or else I get involved in another project and I, and I don't want to put it away and pull this out. So I'm still working on that experiment and see if I can come back to it. And if it, maybe now that I got the top border done and I can come and start working on some of the other sort of big motifs and in this other side border, that it'll feel, I'll feel more accomplished even on a daily basis than I was feeling. And that will keep me going more. Um, the other thing that I'm sort of tossing around is maybe I need to just decide that I'm going to, you know, let's say Mondays and Tuesdays, I'm going to stitch on this. I know a lot of people do that. They'll have certain days a week that they'll stitch on particular projects. So I just want, I'm, I'm just going to keep trying things until something sticks and works for me to keep getting that done because that I, I really do want to, I love the sampler. I love it so much. Um, by the time I get it done, it will be the very much biggest piece I've ever done. And because of when I want to stitch it for, I think that's important too. So that's my very long story about my quick update for my current whip. <laughs> uh, that wraps up what I wanted to really catch up with you on. Um, so as I went through, I already kind of told you my plans. So I have FFO plans for eight uh, things. So eight more FFOs be coming up. Yes. And, um, and then some stitching and uh, Hocus Pocus. Because it's letters, it feels like, oh, this is going to be really fast to stitch. And it, it does move pretty fast. But those big letters for Hocus and Pocus, those take quite a bit of time. There's a lot of stitches in those. So, but it's, a very relaxing stitch, especially to pick up in the evening when you're, you know, hanging out with my husband and, you know, we're watching a show or a movie or something. I can do that and and stitch at the same time easily where other projects I can't always stitch that way. So um, I did want to show you a couple things or I want to share a couple things that I got that I am so in love with. So as far as I know, these are exclusive to Dying to Stitch in Virginia. And I just called them and asked if I could have them send them to me. And yes, I could. So I got them this week. And honestly, I think these are gonna get kitted up pretty soon because I'm so in love with them. So. Um, they're both from Brenda Gervais with Thigh Needle and Thread. The first one is the Pennsylvania Dutch Tomato Pin Keep. Um, my, I will probably change the colors on this just a little bit um, to be more my sort of style. I'll keep it red because of the tomato, but um, the red this is calling for is a little bit brighter than I prefer. So and I would like a little darker green, but I plan to do this little cute finish. And then the other one, I've seen at least one person, but I think there's more than one person I've seen, they're stitching this on Instagram, and this picture does not do this justice. Like, their pictures on Instagram are so beautiful. And it's called Every Opening Flower. And sorry for the... Let me see if I can pull this one out really quick because that glare, you cannot see this very well at all. Oh yeah, it came out easy. Look at that. So every opening flower, isn't that beautiful? Oh my gosh. I love this one. So like I said, pretty sure it's gonna get kitted up pretty soon. You know, cause it's not like I don't have any other kits in my house. 
she says extremely sheepishly because <laughs> I have lots, but just, I love both of those. So I would like to get them going, I think. So, and, oh, those can be a reward. I can reward myself. I can kit those up if I get all these FFOs done. Yeah. How's that for some good, um, can we call that cross-stitching math? <laughs> Shopping math? I reached a really, to me, it's a pretty good uh, milestone. I went over 3,000 subscribers on YouTube. So if you have recently subscribed, thank you. Um, if you haven't subscribed, but you like my channel, would you please consider subscribing? I noticed in, because I can look at like the analytics of the videos, and I'm going to say over 50% of the people watching my videos are not subscribed. So if a few of you want to subscribe, that'd be great. <laughs> Back to the 3000 milestone. I do want to celebrate it and I will. It's just, I didn't have it all organized and ready to go. So that will be coming at some point. I don't know when exactly, because I'm so busy with these FFOs. <laughs> Um, but seriously, I will, I would love to do a celebration and I will get it organized and it will be coming eventually. If you like the video, if you enjoyed spending time with me, please like it and please consider subscribing. And like I reminded you before, you could hit that bell for notifications for when I do get a new video up. And with that, I'm going to say... Thank you so much for sharing your time with me, and I will talk to you soon.